At the edge of a great forest, there once lived a poor woodcutter with his wife and two children. They were both boys called Hansel and Greg. There was never much to eat in the house, and once, during a famine, the woodcutter could no longer put bread on the table. At night, he lay in bed worrying, tossing and turning in his distress. He sighed and said to his wife, What will become of us? How can we provide for our children when we can't even provide for ourselves? Listen to me. Tomorrow, at the break of day, we'll take the kids out into the deepest part of the woods. And we'll give them each a piece of bread. We'll build a fire for them. And we'll leave them there and go about our day. They'll never come back and they'll never be able to find their way out. No, I won't do it. How can I have the heart to take the children out into the middle of the woods and just leave them there when wild beasts will surely shred them to pieces? You fool! Then all four of us will starve to death. We might as well start planging the boards for our coffins. <sighs> but still, I feel sorry for the poor children. The two children hadn't been able to sleep because they were so hungry and they heard everything that their stepmother had said to their father. Afterwards, Greg looked over and said to Hansel, Well, this stinks. Now we're lost. Be quiet, Greg. Stop worrying. I'll figure something out. All right. As soon as the old folks had fallen asleep, he got up and slipped out of the house. The moon was shining brightly, and the white pebbles in front of the house were glittering like silver coins. Hansel stooped down and put as many as would fit into his jacket pocket. Then he went back and said to Greg, Do not worry, little brother. Sleep peacefully. God will not forsake us. At daybreak, just before the sun had risen, the wife came and woke up the two children. Get up, you lazy bones, she said. We're going to go into the forest to get some wood. The wife gave each child a little piece of bread and said, Here's something for lunch, but don't eat it before then, because you're not getting anything else. Then they all set out together on the path into the forest. After a little while, Hansel stopped to look back at the house. He did that again and again. His father said, Hansel, why are you always stopping and staring? Watch out and don't forget what your legs are for. Oh, father, said Hansel, I'm looking at my white kitten, which is sitting up on the roof trying to bid me farewell. The woman said, you fool, that's not your kitten. Those are rays of the sun shining on the chimney. But Hansel had not been looking at the kitten. He had been taking the shiny pebbles from his pocket and dropping them on the ground. The family then gathered some wood and built a huge fire. Afterwards, the mother told Hansel and Greg to eat the bread and to fall asleep and get some rest, and that they'll be back afterwards to get them later. However, when they woke up, they were not there. Greg said to Hansel, How will we ever get out of the woods? Hansel comforted him, Just wait until the moon has risen, then we will find the way back. And when the full moon had risen, Hansel took his brother by the hand and followed the pebbles, which were shimmering like newly minted coins and pointed the way for them. They walked all night long and arrived at their father's house just as day was breaking. They knocked at the door. You wicked children! Why did you sleep so long in the woods? We thought you weren't ever going to come back! But the father was overjoyed because he had been upset at how he had abandoned them in the forest. Not long after that, every square inch of the country was stricken by famine, and one night the children could hear what the mother was saying to their father when they were in bed. We've eaten everything up. There's only half a loaf of bread left. The children have got to go. This time, we'll take them further into the woods, and they'll never be able to find their way back. <laughs> The children were still awake and had heard the conversation. When their parents had fallen asleep, Hansel got up and wanted to go out and pick up some pebbles as he had the last time. But the woman had locked the door and Hansel could not get out. But he comforted his little brother and said, Don't cry, Greg. Just sleep peacefully. The Lord will protect us. Early the next morning, the woman came in and woke the children up. They each got a little piece of bread, this time even smaller than the last time. On the way into the woods, Hansel crushed the bread in his pocket and would often stop to scatter crumbs on the ground. Hansel, why are you stopping and staring? asked the father. Keep going. I'm looking at my little dove. 
the one sitting on the roof and trying to bid me farewell, Hansel replied. Fool, said the woman, that isn't your little dove. Those are the rays of the morning sun shining up on the chimney. After a while, Hansel had scattered all the crumbs on the path. The woman took the children even deeper into the woods, where they had never been before in their lives. Once again, a large fire was built, and the mother said, Don't move from there, children. If you get tired, you can sleep for a while. We're going to go into the forest to chop some wood. In the evening, when we're done, we'll come to get you. But they had never came back for the children. Hansel tried to find his way back using the breadcrumbs that he had spread earlier that day, but the birds had eaten them all up and he could not find his way back. This resulted in Hansel and Greg starving for a couple of days. It was now the third morning after they had left their father's house. They started walking again, but they just got deeper and deeper into the woods. If they didn't get help soon, they were sure to perish. At noon, they saw a beautiful bird, white as snow, perched on a branch. It was singing so beautifully that they stopped to listen. When it had finished its song, it flapped its wing and flew ahead of them. They followed it until they came to a little house, and the bird perched on its roof. As they approached the house, they realized that it was made of bread and had a roof made of cake and transparent windows of sugar. Yo, the house over there was made of sweets and candies. So I got a piece of the roof right here. You can have the window. Tell me what that tastes like. Wow, this is really good. The window? Yeah, man. It's not better than the roof. Are you sure? Because uh, this is some pretty good window right here. I'm pretty sure. The roof is like on point. Let me try some of that roof. Wait. Oh, yeah. See a window. I want to see the window. Nah, I'll take the roof. The roof? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the roof is definitely better. Yeah. The window's still better. Okay, then. Later, two beautiful beds were made up for the children. Hansel and Greg lay down in them and felt as if they were in heaven. However, the old woman had only pretended to be so friendly. She was really a wicked witch who ate children. So at her next opportunity, she took Hansel and threw him in the shed where he was to be cooked. Ah! Oh! Lazy bag of bones. I need you to go fetch some water. Fix some breakfast for your brother. He's out in the shed. When he gets fat enough, I'll eat him. <laughs> Great. First, we'll do some baking. I think the oven's hot enough. Why don't you open the door and see if it's hot enough for, for me? But I don't know how to get in there. Okay, it's big enough for me to get in. Move out my way, boy. Move out my way. But after the witch turned her back, Greg gave her a big push that sent her sprawling. The witch began screeching dreadfully, but Greg ran away, and the godless witch burned miserably to death. Hansel! Yo! Let's kill the witch. She's in the oven. We gotta go now, man. We gotta go. Up right now? Yeah, that's what's up. Up top. Ah! Before leaving, however, Hansel and Greg decided to take some of the witch's jewels. After they left the house, they came to a body of water. At first, they could not cross the body of water, but a duck came paddling over, and one by one, it took them across the body of water. Soon afterwards, they had reached their home. When they saw their father, they ran straight into his arms, and he embraced them. When they asked where their mother was, he replied that she had died. With the jewels that they had taken from the witch's house, 
they lived happily ever after.